Okay. Finally. <laughs> Second time's the charm. Hopefully we won't need a third, but we are back for episode 12 of More Context, the podcast. And so I welcome you back. Um, last night I recorded the podcast and I want to say it was like an hour long and unbeknownst to me, um, it stopped recording halfway through devastated but you know what i was like i'm not gonna let it ruin my night i just ended up watching i took a shower and i watched another episode of um good morning america or the morning show or whatever it's called on apple tv plus and if you haven't watched it it's really good i would recommend that show um, and then I just went to sleep and I was like, hopefully, which I knew it was going to be, but I was like, hopefully my energy is restored tomorrow. And before in between getting my breakfast or eating my breakfast and going outside to play, I will, I will record another episode. And so, um, here I am recording. It's 1130 and i'm proud of myself <laughs> for sticking through because i really want to be in the sun right now i've been working on my tan and you know i got a few more days left but like every little bit of sun counts especially when you don't know when you're going to be back in the sun every little bit of sun counts um <laughs> so i was really excited though about um about this episode um I was excited to record it last night. I was happy that I had got it through. I was happy that I had finished it. But of course, you know, everything happens for a reason. So here we are again. Um, and I'm sure that I can translate that energy from yesterday into today and make this, you know, even better. So um, why not? I'm, I'm not even mad. Like I'm more, ex I'm more excited today than I was yesterday. And granted, I wanted the episode to come out last night um, on Christmas Eve. Today is Christmas Day. Happy holidays if you recognize commercial holidays. Um, it's not really my thing, but I can't fault, you know, America for it being America's, well, Christians for it being um, Christians things. But um, I don't really celebrate the holidays. So, I mean, I guess you can call me celebrating the holidays being on vacation that's how i choose to celebrate i just don't recognize it as um a christmas vacation or you know i mean call it what you want i'm here i'm enjoying myself i'm having a good time i'm in high spirits i'm loving life i'm enjoying everything that's around me everything that's happening right now i'm happy to see everybody happy so um you know merry christmas to your family happy kwanzaa happy hanukkah Happy holidays if you celebrate the holidays. If you don't, happy Friday. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm just I'm really excited about this episode. And I'm I'm more excited like I'm excited about season two because I like I said before, like I'm just ready to be more vulnerable, more personal, um, more opinionated. Like, and so with that being said, like I'm really excited about this episode because i think this is a testament to you know the fact that i am wanting to open up more and more so because okay i see my podcast as i see this podcast as like close friends like like how you have your close friends on instagram well i don't have a close friends on instagram because i just kind of feel like if it's not for the internet it just ain't for the internet so like i'm not about to pick and choose who i want to see what like either everybody sees it or nobody sees it right so i don't have a close friends on instagram um i did for literally maybe 24 hours and this was like maybe the top of the year because i wanted to share more um more content related to like not even content because y'all know i hate talking about content but i wanted to share more of me um as it pertains to like me and my marijuana usage but um and i didn't want that to be so public 
because one, it was like, I didn't really want to be judged. Like, oh, she a wee hit, whatever. And you know, you just never know who's watching. Well, then I stopped giving a fuck because I'm like, this is me. Like I literally smoke weed. So like, why am I hiding it? Who am I hiding it from? My mother know I smoke weed. Like, I feel like my job, if they were to follow me, which they don't, and, um, but I'm like, I feel like if they were to follow me, like my job is pretty liberal. Like it's not a secret that one of the white guys in my, anyway, that's too much. Anyway, <laughs> the podcast is my close friends, right? Um, but it means more to me because I didn't choose you. I didn't, I didn't go down the lineup and be like, yup, I want you in. I want you in. It's not a secret society. It's not like a, it's not a private circle. Like you chose me. You decided to be here. You pulled up on me. You wanted to listen to what I had to say. And so like, I feel like that means even more to me than even having a close friends because you chose me. So like you deserve to hear, to like, to know, you know, the things that's going on in more context um, than the general public does. Like, you know, people pull up on you on Instagram for whatever reason, maybe they're entertained, maybe they're interested, maybe they do genuinely like you and they enjoy your stuff. Maybe they just nosy, but you gotta really fuck with somebody <laughs> to pull up on their podcast. You gotta really be interested in what they have to say. And so for that, like, I'm here to give you like what you what you want to hear, right? So, um, so let's just jump right into it, shall we? Uh, uh again, today is Christmas, December twenty fifth, twenty twenty, and um, as of today, I am four months pregnant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am, um, and like. I am still very overwhelmed. I am still processing the shit out of the fact that I'm about to be somebody's mother. <laughs> I'm about to be somebody's mom. I'm still processing. I'm excited now. It's been a journey these four, well, I've known for, I found out at five months. So let's, let's take you through, let's walk you through the whole me finding out up until today. And before I go any further, um, with me talking about, with me mentioning how I feel like you're in my close friends, I want you to treat what I say on the podcast with the same respect that you would being in somebody's close friends. Like, I don't think, I think that if, if, if you were in somebody's close friends or you had close friends, you wouldn't really expect them to screenshot what they post and then publicly post it or basically share what they sh what they share share what they share with you in private to the public and so i would like that same respect like it's not on the internet yet um beyond podcasts and then the same thing for youtube not everybody pulls up on my youtube like i think i get like 70 views on my youtube channel so like that doesn't equate to like the amount of views that i get in my instagram story or like you know the number of people that follow me on instagram so obviously that it's two different platforms. It's not translating the same. So again, I feel like if you go out of your way to pull up on my YouTube channel, thank you because you chose me. You didn't, I didn't like, you know, tell you to, to, I didn't force you to watch it or whatever. Like you went to another platform because obviously my largest amount of followers are on Instagram. So if you, if you went out of your way off of Instagram to pull up on my YouTube, then shit, you deserve to see what you're seeing. But with the same respect, if I don't post it on Instagram, please don't, you don't post it on Instagram. Just give me that respect. Give me that decency. Give give me that semi amount of privacy to where, um, because it's like, I, like I'm just not ready for that amount of attention. <laughs> or and like, I, like I said, it's still very overwhelming. I'm still trying to process. So me doing it this way is kind of like, I'm telling you and then you hear it. And you know, I like, it's it's like, it's, it's a rollout. In addition to the fact that we haven't really finished telling our, um, our close friends and family yet. And so today is probably gonna be the day, well, it's definitely gonna be, be the day earlier this morning. 
um i text my like line sisters and my sister i told her um some of my old co work well a couple of my old co-workers and so like we're still rolling out you know the debut if you will we're still trying to tell the people that we need to tell that we don't necessarily want to find out on the internet and my boyfriend doesn't have <clears throat> my boyfriend doesn't have social media um so he's not on the internet at all and like a couple of his friends do follow me on the internet and he still he still hasn't told his friends yet like he's gonna meet me so i am on vacation right now as you may or may not know i i do always take um an annual solo vacation during the christmas holiday because typically i suffer from seasonal depression and i felt like if i'm a suffer why suffer in the cold like why not pull up on a beach and so um this is actually prevented the seasonal depression by me doing this so i obviously am not depressed being out <laughs> on the beach or whatever um so this is the first year my boyfriend is actually meeting me he, meeting me on my vacation because you know we do i do want to spend it with him i do want to spend the rest of the vacation with him but also you know we want to um share to his family that we're expecting and you know stuff like that so again just respect that and not you know post anything on um instagram or facebook or whatever because i'm not there yet and i don't even have a facebook so the last thing i want to see is like or hear about is me on somebody else's facebook and i ain't even gonna be able to see it like the fuck anyway so from the beginning um oh another thing <laughs> please stop adding shit up <laughs> That shit is so annoying. You know how you tell somebody something? And I'm telling you this right now so that when I when I go through my timeline, it just it falls in place for you. Because I hate when I tell somebody something and they, then they be like, oh, that makes sense why you and why you all. No, mm -mm. I ain't a clue dropper. I don't do that. Like, I'm, I don't just be dr dropping clues when niggas like, I just do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. So like, no, that's not why I'm looking for a house. Like we've been looking for a house since the summertime. Obviously now our eyes and what we're looking for is a little different. Like, you know, our, our must haves are a little different, but that's not why we're looking for a house. We've been looking for a house since the summertime. Also, no, that's not why I took my hiatus. I didn't find out I was pregnant until I was already on my hiatus. Okay? Okay. Anyway, let's walk you through the timeline. So, um, conceived in September, found out, found out in, in October during my hiatus, I found out, um, I took the test, uh, seven days after my period was late, but I kind of knew. My period is officially seven days late and I'm low key stressing out about it. That is all. I knew I had a feeling that my period wasn't coming. It just, it just didn't feel right to me. Um, I, I had a feeling that my period wasn't coming. And then when it didn't come, cause my period come like clockwork. So when it was, when it was like the day of i was like huh? is this it huh? is this it um but it wasn't it wasn't and so the seventh day of me being late i took the test and, and honestly that shit i feel like housekeeping is coming to knock on the door and that would be very convenient right now but i'm gonna just wait and see um but okay so i had a scare probably like two years ago and so i already had pregnancy tests in the bathroom and it was like a three pack or whatever and i didn't really what well, okay so one of them was like a early results test another one was like a digital test and then the other one was like the regular test where it's like the lines or whatever so when i took the test I didn't re I didn't like look and see which one I was pulling out and I just pulled it out and I took it and it ended up being a digital one. So here I am waiting like the two or three minutes for the results to come in and I look over 
thinking that I'm about to have to decipher these lines and figure some shit out with the two horizontal and a and a vertical what's going on is sis pregnant or not um and so i look over and that shit straight said yes Yes. Essentially, it said, bitch, you are the fuck pregnant. And so that shocked the hell out of me because, like I said, I wasn't just, I wasn't expecting it just to be like, blah, ta da, watch, not, watch out now. It's the little one and I'm not bad wow. Like, I really thought that I was going to have to pull out the instructions and be like, okay, let's see. Maybe I need to take another one. Is it right? Is it wrong? And so. It um it said yes and it it surprised the shit out of me and then and my boyfriend knew that I was taking the test at the time he was this was like in the morning so he was um he was you know logging onto his computer for work so then I walked in the dining room and I showed him the test and he had the same like he was feeling the same thing like he thought that he was about to have to decipher what it means and that shit just straight said yes so he just kept saying oh wow oh wow oh wow and i couldn't take another oh wow so i i backed up and i went in my bedroom I went in the bedroom and I just like flopped on the bed. Also, real quick, um, if you don't know, if you are taking a pregnant, if you need to take a pregnancy test, it's best to take a pregnancy test in the morning when you first wake up because your hormones and everything are like not really awake. They're 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 equal. They're neutral, so they had you haven't really been shaken up or whatever. So you get the basically you get the mo the most efficient pregnancy test results in the morning when you first wake up. So anyway, so. Um, he comes in the room and I'm like crying because I wasn't happy. Like I like I was a lot of things and joy and happiness that wasn't it. Not initially, right? So because okay, actually the night okay, two days before we actually conceived in September, I was at I had spent like the week at my best friend's house in New York. And me, her, and her husband had just had this conversation, like, that Thursday. And then I left Saturday and conceived Saturday night or whatever. But that Thursday, we had just had this conversation about, like, life and, you know, adulthood and, and you know, just growing up and where we were in our lives and how we felt about, you know, children or whatever. And so, Speaking personally, I was saying that, you know, I, I just wasn't sure if I wanted to be a mom. Like, not, it, not you know, um, I don't know if I'm ready and all that. Not, it wasn't about that. It was legitimately, legitimately about whether or not I even wanted to be a mother. And I was 70% I do not want to be a mother. And like 30%, mm, maybe, I could see it, like... Um, I get like, I get baby fever and shit like that. But like, I, I would have been, I probably would have gotten a dog or something if I really didn't, if like, you know, I just really decided that I didn't want to be a mom or whatever. So, um, back to present, you know, present day of me finding out, you know, I just, I was like, I was just rushed with like all these emotions. So from what I can remember, why I was sad and why I wasn't ready to embrace it was like, for one, I was not ready to give up weed. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. I was not ready to give up weed. I just wasn't. I'm like, we are in this pandemic. 
We are in the house. We not going nowhere. We not doing nothing. And so like, I like the Mia. <laughs> like, I that's just it. Just is what it is, right? And so like, and I'm like, yo, when I don't feel good, like emotionally or like whatever, like you just hit a J a couple times and like yes, sp- like your spirit, your energy just like starts floating and it's like what happened oh okay whatever um and so like that was like i i just i was not ready to stop and i'm like if i gotta go through this if i gotta go through something that i barely even want to go through and i can't do it without the weed uh uh-uh. i don't know if it's for me sis i just mm-mm. like i don't i just i don't know so that was one of it but deeper what the real what the real issues for me were was that and this is very candidly speaking was that i feel like it took so long so long for me to get to where i am now like emotionally physically spiritually um mentally just like It took me, like, I feel like I'm at my most self-aware. I feel like I am at my most confident. I feel like I'm cool as shit. Like, I love my personality. I feel like my emotions are very much so stabilized. I feel like I understand myself. And so, I understand that, like, having a baby changes all of that (laughs) and i'm like i was not ready to fucking let that go like i'm not trying to i just it's just like i worked so hard to be where i am and i'm still a work in progress as we all are and i'm but i'm i'm not done working working at the level that i am now i'm not ready to incorporate another level a whole different level um, which is motherhood. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I didn't even know if I wanted that, let alone was ready for that. Right. So I like, when I cried, when I found out, yes, I cried because I was sad and I was confused and I was concerned and I was worried and I was scared and I'm still very much. So all of those things. Um, but now it comes with like excitement and shit. So what actually turned me around from that was so when i found out i was five weeks i was already five weeks when i found out and i was in the middle of contemplating going on this road trip um and at first i was like well now that i know do i want to go because i'm supposed to be going with somebody i don't even know like that um but i was like you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna go because fortunately thank you so much um fortunately i have not experienced any complications in my pregnancy thus far um like i said i'm four months right now i'm in my second trimester and honestly the worst part of my first trimester was the extreme fatigue fatigueness that i had um i've never really taken naps and shit but i took a lot of naps during my first trimester um to the point where like in between meetings and stuff i like had to set my alarm for each meeting because i was likely to fall asleep um and i didn't do too much yoga and y'all know i don't play about my yoga but i just could not do yoga i tried to do like restorative yoga because we're normally not as active but i couldn't even get up for restorative yoga i was like mm, i'm gonna just had to call y'all back but um so i decided to go on that road trip and it was 30 hours and like i I mentioned it before but i'm definitely going to expand more on the road trip because that did a lot for me it did a whole lot for me um and so i was seven i was seven weeks when i got to montana which was where i went and so we got there like monday evening tuesday morning we got up and went on this hike now i had i've never been hiking before in my life let alone up some motherfucking mountains like a little walk in the park cool a little stroll on the beach easy you know what i'm saying kicking rocks literally dusting up the sand cool 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 but my nigga walking i mean hike excuse me hiking up some mountains in frigid temperatures with like boulders and like forests and wildlife 
and waterfalls and lakes and shit. Nah, I ain't never did that before. I'm black, remember? I'm in Montana, mind you. So obviously at this point I'm with white people. Again, I'm gonna expand on that um, in the next episode, but it wasn't until, so we hiked up um, what I believe, I think it was called Bear Tooth Mountains, Big Toe Mountains, Bear Toe Mountains. I'm gonna go with Bear Tooth. Cause that's, I'm gonna go with Bear Tooth. We hiked up Bear Tooth Mountains and we only went in, went up two miles and then came back down two miles. And I say only because I was with um, a colleague of mine and her eldest son who's like 24 and he's super into nature. Like he literally hikes up mountains like to the point where I asked him how long it typically takes him to like hike up mountains. And he, I mean like hike up, like climbs up the side of mountains. And he was like on a good day or a bad day. And I was like, a good one. And he said 12 hours. And I was like, oh no, cause we not about to be out here for 12 hours. Um, but but no, we had hiked um, in like up the mountain, up the mountain side, not up the mountain, not vertically, but like up the mountain side, we had hiked, um, we had hiked two miles in. And so once we got to um, a plateau and we were like chilling on a cliff and we like had our snacks and stuff, um, it was fucking gorgeous. Like the whole time it was gorgeous, but it was just like, you know, air that I never smelled before. And it was like sights that I had never seen. And it was just I, like all five of my senses were just invigorated. And it was at that moment of being with these people that I know I would have never crossed paths with outside of work. Um, but being with these people, being in this state that I know I would have never visited, um, being in this situation that I know I would have I would have never situated myself in, seeing these things that I feel like I probably would have never seen before and experiencing what I was experiencing in that moment and doing that shit seven months pregnant. I'm seven months, good gracious. <laughs> doing that shit seven weeks pregnant, I was like, okay, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. I might could do this pregnancy thing. I mm, hold on, mommy on a, I, Are you calling? Hello. Um, I I really felt like you know, like I'm I'm doing this. Like I'm still myself. I'm still very much so doing some shit that I would have done a year or two ago. Like you know what I mean? It was like being seven, being pregnant right now is not stopping me from doing something that I that I wanted to do. And I was like, and so that hit a trigger and like basically just gave me this epiphany of like I don't I don't have to stop being me I don't have to stop doing the things that I want to do and going to places that I want to want that I want to go and seeing the things that I want to see like I don't have to stop um and so from there my mind started transitioning to um the fact that yes I am still growing um internally and obviously physically <laughs> externally but um, it was like, now I am growing into a new era in my life that it's just time to embrace. Like, you can't, you don't ask for the things that happens to you in life. Life just gives that shit to you, whether you want it or not. Like, you just got to take that shit and on the motherfucking chin. And that's what I did. Like, well, obviously I ain't taking on the chin. I took it. That. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, so, and and at no point was it ever in my mind to not go through with this pregnancy. That wasn't, that wasn't, now, I am 100,000% pro-choice, okay? I've been there before, 12 years ago, and I made that choice of my own. Obviously, I don't have any children, and I don't regret that whatsoever, but I knew that if I was ever in that situation again, for one, it was it, I was going to be in that situation because I was supposed to be in this this situation, should I say? Um, and so, you know, I was always ever since I had my one that one time, I always made sure that I was like careful not to have to make that decision again. Um, and so, my boyfriend and I, we weren't proactively trying, but we also weren't actively preventing it. Um, and so we were both kind of like, you know, whatever happens, happens. And that was why I knew that like, you know, 
if the, it, I mean, it's, it's if it's for me, it's for me. Because if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, then, you know, I won't be mad either. And so it happened. And, you know, I, I like was take, I was taken aback by it. But literally, it took me two weeks to embrace what was happening or whatever. And so um, I'm happy that I, I was able to come around. I was I'm definitely happy that it only took me two weeks. To, to be happy and excited about it, I'm still overwhelmed as fuck. If I did not say that already, and I know I did because I am. And I'm definitely, again, still trying to process what, what you know, is happening because it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, but I'm grateful. I'm thankful for where I am. Wow, I'm so thankful and grateful for my person, for Corey, um, because I know that like, I wouldn't be emotionally where I am if I did not have him. Um, you know, every step of the way, he's been like by my side, just emotionally, physically, you know what I mean? It's like, even for me to have to have a conversation with somebody who has never done a drug in their life, who has never had a sip of alcohol in their life, for me to have a conversation about how I wasn't ready to be pregnant because I wasn't ready to stop smoking weed and for that nigga to understand, like, that was like a lot for me, you know what I mean? He was like, you know, cause I didn't know how it was gonna be. Um, and you know, we kind of had this conversation with like, basically what's, what, what works for me, you know, what worked for me. Now, when it comes to weed, <laughs> I did stop, I stopped smoking. Um, I did initially in the beginning, I did not want to stop. Um, and in the beginning, I, my appetite was horrible. I did not eat. Um, I like, I lost 10 pounds in the first like few weeks of my pregnancy. I lost like, prob no, I probably lost like 13 pounds in my pregnancy or whatever. And I definitely started to feel that, that little itch of self-consciousness cause consciousness. Cause I'm like, oh my God, like I worked so hard. I worked so hard to put these pounds on and now you just going <coughs> my nigga inside you just going to take them away um and so you know I, now you know I've started gaining my weight back but I like that uh, and so I couldn't really eat um and then also my mouth tasted so nasty in the beginning like pennies like what is that I don't know but and it it isn't a vitamin deficient deficiency because I got all, I get all my vitamins and my doctor also said that I was fine or whatever, but, um, but yeah, so my mouth tasted really nasty all the time in the beginning. I was very tired all the time in the beginning. Fortunately, I was not sick. The only time I felt nauseous was when I accidentally took my prenatal vitamin on an empty stomach and that shit almost fucking took me the fuck out. Um, and so I really only smoked. I want to say four to once I had once I'd known I was pregnant I think I smoked a total of four I'm gonna say six I'm gonna be I'm a big I'm gonna be liberal and be like and say six I want to say and this was before my shit this was probably this was definitely in the beginning this was like the first three or four weeks of me knowing that I was pregnant um I probably smoked like between three and no between like four and six times and i really only smoked because one i remember one time i hit it and when i say smoked i don't mean like face the j and then was just high off my ass like the couple times that i did smoke um i hit it i would like hit a j just a couple of times and it was literally one time i did it because i had a headache and i don't take medicine and so um my headache was fucking throbbing my eyes was hurting and i don't i typically don't even get headaches let alone a migraine but this shit felt like a migraine and i was like i just need to smoke to like you know to be better and it worked and so um i i smoked that time and then the other couple times that i smoked was one i think i didn't feel good again it was like another headache or something like that or like maybe nauseous or something like that um, and then the other couple times was when like, I just had not eaten and I needed to eat something and I did not have an appetite and I knew, <laughs> I knew what was going to give it to me. And so like, I hit it a couple times and I ate. 
So, um, but then I got to a point where like, I had no desire to smoke whatsoever. Um, and like one time I did, the, um, and it tasted disgusting and it just didn't even feel right. Like, like, I, like, you know, the high was there, but I like, it wasn't like an enjoyable one. It was just like, what What's happening? Like, why am I here? It was, it, it just, it wasn't. It wasn't as pleasurable as I wanted it to be. And from that from that day on, the taste of it, it was like the smell of it. Um, and then just just me being there. Like I kind of felt dumb doing it. And I was just like, okay, well, there's that. I, no, no more weed for me. Um, so I haven't smoked in three months. Um, and it's it hasn't been hard. I'm I'm very fortunate and grateful that. My body made that decision for me as opposed to my mind because I feel like if I had to, if I was like, if I still wanted to smoke and I was still like in that space that I was in the day I found out, I feel like mentally I probably would be struggling. Like, especially if I was like experiencing something that was like difficult or something and like would rather just dwindle into my thoughts on some, on some high shit. Like, I would probably be upset or sad that I couldn't, I couldn't like call on to, you know, my little, my little Jay, little Jay and shit. Um, but, but yeah, so, um, I naturally gave up, gave up weed and, oh, it'll be back. It'll be back when it's all said and done. When my mixtape drop, it'll be back. I got, uh, the rest of my stash in, um, in a uh, mason jars marinating because we don't get old it might get stale but it still give you that same good amount of high um but i'm i'm definitely i'm gonna pull back pull back up on it and you know see what it's talking about when my mixtape drop or whatever um and so um now i'm really i am really happy that I am really happy that I'm excited. I am genuinely excited, especially because, because we are in fact having a boy. <laughs> um, I wanted a boy really, really, really bad. And I think niggas knew, niggas knew what I needed. Like I needed that, I needed that boy. Cause I'm not even a hundred percent sure I'm gonna have another one. And so, like, if I just have a boy, I'm going to just be content with the one. And so, obviously, if I if we do decide to have another one, then it would be great for it to be a girl so we can just get those two and then move on with life. But niggas knew I needed this boy. And when I felt like, I ain't even going to hold you. When I, when I knew I was pregnant, when I felt like I was pregnant before I had confirmed it with the test, and then once I found out, and then you know just going through up until i actually found out that it was a boy i knew that it was a, a boy energet energetically like i knew i felt it like i felt it was a boy all up in there or whatever so i knew it was a boy for me um and so my boyfriend and i are very 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 happy we're really happy about that um and that was actually when i cried tears of joy was when i found out was when it was confirmed that it was a boy so when i went to my first doctor's appointment um, I had to take all these tests and I think I was like 10 or 11 weeks when I when I went to my first appointment and they had to take they had to take like all this blood from me like they wanted to get 10 vials but my arm was like no nah. and it stopped pumping at like eight and a half so they got like eight and a half vials from me or whatever and so they took you know they they ran all the tests and um and one of the tests were for the genetics of the baby, like, you know, um, and like the chromosomes or whatever. So she was like, um, when you get your test results back, do you want to know the sex? I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I want to know everything, everything. I don't, no secrets, sis. I ain't none of them surprises. No, uh-uh, gender reveal. No, no reveal. You know, I don't like attention. Um, I need to know, and I'm, I, I need to know everything, everything that's happening. So, so she was like, okay, so you'll have your results in a week or so, a, a week or two, but she was like more than likely within the next week or whatever. And so I had went to my first doctor's appointment the week before Thanksgiving. 
So I was like, if I don't get my results, you know, before next week, like I, I know it's because, you know, Thanksgiving or whatever. So I'm getting like, literally, I went to the doctor like that Monday. I started getting emails like that Thursday about my test results. So I'm like, okay. So it like mad at them start rolling, rolling in at once. It was like a whole bunch. So I'm like, okay, okay. Going through, reading through negative, you know, um, negative, negative, um, um okay 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 everything was fine so i'm like cool so now any moment now the real results that i'm waiting for should be rolling in so you know they start trickling in next week another one come and i'm like corey now's the time we about to find out oh no it's just another one of my test results then i get to the point i'm like all right fuck me i i, I i'm i'm cool i realize that you know they negative they either negative or normal the results is negative or normal and i'm i'm grateful for that but i need to know about this baby <laughs> so like you know um things are giving past nothing so I get to a point where I'm like, cause my next appointment was December 14th, that Monday. And so the week before December 14th, I was like, yo, Corey, we still don't know the results. Like what if something is wrong? But more so like, I just really want to know what's going on. So he was like, well call if you concerned or whatever. So I called and she was like, you, um, she was like, oh yeah, we have your results in about the baby. She was like, you, you should have received the email. And I'm like, bitch, I wouldn't be on this phone with you if I got an email. What are you talking I hate when people do shit like that. Yes, yes, you should have received the email. And I didn't. So here we are now on this phone conversation. Um, but she was like, yeah, you know, the baby looks good. The chromosomes are, you know, fine or whatever. And she was like, I'll be sure to push push the results to the portal. Yes, thank you, Miss Email, because it's not there. Um she was like but she was like uh and do you want to know the sex of the baby and i'm like yes <laughs> that's the real reason why i'm calling um i obviously i really needed to know about the chromosomes and stuff but come on sis now that i know that it's normal and everything is okay give me what i want so she was like okay and i was like all right hold on let me run in front of my boyfriend real quick so we can hear at the same time so um so i ran down off the loft or whatever and put the phone on speakerphone and she was like you ready mad nonchalant i ain't really like her attitude at a time like this i feel like you know bitches is like excited or like i need you to have a little bit of energy please and thank you so um so i was like yeah i was like we're ready or whatever she was like you're having a boy i was like i was like oh my god thank you and hung up on her right and not to be rude, but she had done enough. And so me and Corey looked at each other and I was like, oh my God, it's a boy. It's a boy. I knew it was a boy or whatever. And at that time, at that point, I cried tears of joy. Like I was really happy because it's like now it's confirmed. I do actually get my little homie because that's really all I want. I just want my little homie and we going to kick it and we going to go on these motherfucking trips. And we're going to be hand in hand. And we're just going to be one cool ass family. Because I'm cool. At least now. Hopefully, you know. Once he come. That don't change. You know. Um, his dad is cool. And like. He's a, he's about to be a Gemini baby. Because I'm due in June. Um, my boyfriend is a Gemini. I'm an Aquarius. And if you don't know. Gemini's and Aquarius's are the most compatible sign for one another. Either for Aquarius's, it's either a Gemini or a Libra. And fortunately, I got my Gemini. I also got my Gemini baby. So I know we about to be mad compatible. And I'm really excited about that. So, you know, I'm just going to have my little homie. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I got my little homie with me now. But he ain't doing shit but swimming inside um <laughs> while i'm trying to get my swim on outside um and so like you know my boyfriend is actually on his way i think i mentioned that before my but my boyfriend should be here like low-key any minute now and it's just so crazy because i'm recording this podcast and while i stare out onto my balcony and it's like mad boats just sailing by and birds and the ocean is beautiful and everything is just fucking lovely and i'm happy and my boyfriend will be here at any moment 
and so we'll be spending the rest of um the like christmas vacation together and we haven't told his family yet um his we'll tell his family today actually for christmas so that'll be their christmas the gift um i know they'll be extremely excited about that because the last time i saw them was like sometime over the summertime and for the first time for the first time i got pulled to the side by his grandmother and i got pulled to the side by his aunt and they both se separately i think the grandmother was like when y'all having a baby and blah blah, blah. and then his aunt was like when y'all getting married and blah blah and i'm just like sis wait a minute wait a minute so i'm really excited that now i get to be like hey y'all remember when y'all asked me about that baby well here it is um so that i that i know that's gonna be super exciting for them and you know another reason why again it's not on the internet yet because not again we don't we haven't told everybody that we wanted to tell i've sent out my text message a, a couple of text messages um this week and uh, in regards to me really the only people that knew was so i told crystal and chanel which are basically my two best friends you know chanel is my niece but we grew up like sisters um so i had to tell her and crystal i told her obviously um and it's so it's so crazy because when i told them i was still in that realm of like not really being too excited and so you know the go-to response is congratulations and it made me wonder like why is that the default response when you tell when you tell somebody you're pregnant like why is it just congratulations like i wasn't ready to receive a congratulations i wanted like and all how you holding up how you doing <laughs> now you know i'm i'm excited and i'm like all for the congratulations but before i was like what you mean congratulations bitch ain't no congratulations um but it it is it is something that i always think about like i wonder why the default is congratulations like i know that it's like it's a gift and you know but it's like for a lot of moms like initially in the beginning it's like i this don't feel like a gift to me right now this this i don't really this don't feel very congratulatory um fortunately that only lasted for me for two weeks but yeah so i told crystal and chanel and then I also told my my um, friend Rachel, who is my yoga my yoga instructor or whatever. I had to tell her because I was like, listen, now that I'm getting back on the mat, because I did progressively get back into yoga, and then once I did, it was I was all restorative, so I was only dialing in on Wednesdays Wednesday mornings and Tuesday night. Um, and now I'm starting to get more back into active, but I'm like. I'm gonna need um, them modifications, them pregnancy modifications. But me and me, Rachel and I are just really, cro really close anyway. I look at her as like a big sister, like a spiritual mentor of sorts. Like I just really love Nick. I really love Rachel. We connect on like a very, I feel like spiritual level or whatever. And um, and so I definitely felt like I had to tell her. Um, and then I also told the the colleague of mine that I was on a road trip with, because I was like, I mean, we about to be in this car together for 30 hours. You won't have to know something going on with me, sis. But um, but yeah, that, and that was that was definitely cool. But then from that, like, I didn't tell anybody else. And so it wasn't until last week, like I said, I had my deck my second doctor's appointment, um, December 14th. And that was a Monday. And so I told my mom that we were going to see my grandmother because I really miss her, which is true. I do very much so miss my grandmother. That is my best friend. That is my fucking baby. That is my heart. That is the love of my motherfucking life. So, and my grandmother is older. She's like 88, 88, I believe. And so she did live in Maryland for like years or whatever, but she got sick last year. She had a stroke and she ended up moving back to her hometown in Ohio. And so she's not, you know, physically, um, geographically, she's not as close to me as I'm used to. And so, uh, because she's lived in Maryland my, my entire life. Um, so this, this, 
her moving to Ohio has definitely been a huge adjustment for me. But, um, you know, I told my mom, I was like, you know, before I go on my trip for Christmas, I want to go see my grandmother before I go out the country. And so I was like, I feel like I, I was like, you should come with me or whatever. And so um, my mom, you know, if you, you should know that she just recently moved back to the East Coast from Houston. So she came up from um, Virginia and she came up Wednesday, the 16th. And so, um, so I told my mom on the 17th um, about the pregnancy or whatever. And she was really excited. And I do have visuals for that. I actually have visuals for, um, you know, when both Corey and I found out and like up until like my first doctor's appointment. And then, um, and I think that's going to, I think I'm going to drop that on YouTube next week. And then I also, um, have the visuals of me telling my mom, my grandmother, because we went to, so my mom, me and Corey drove to Ohio Friday, the 18th and, or is it the 19th? Whatever. If Monday was the 14th, then that makes Friday the what? 19th? Anyway. 18th. 19th. Whatever. <laughs> I, yo, pregnancy brain is fucking real. Um, but anyway, we went to... Um, 18th, by the way. I just did the math in my head real quick. Um, we had went to... Uh, where the fuck did we go? Oh, we went to oh, <laughs> we went to Ohio Friday to tell my grandmother, and then you know we went back home Friday evening. So I had the video of my mom's reaction, my grandmother's reaction, and then I also told my brother JT on Facetime as we were riding back home from Ohio. So I got his reaction too. Um, so that video is also coming out, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just really excited now. I'm in a good, uh, I'm in a good space. Um, obviously, like I said, I have not told the masses with, in which the masses being Instagram. Um, I don't have a Facebook. I told my mom, you know, not to put anything up. I t basically everybody that knows now. So today being Christmas, I told as of today, um, I told my other best friend, Tiffany, that's in New York. I told my sister, my younger sister, Corey has told his sister last night. I told my line sisters this morning. Um, and my mom told my older sister, which is Chanel's mom. She told her last week. Um, so my older sister knows, but um, I'm still working through and I, I'm still working through. Oh, I also told my homie Jamal and his wife. And I told an old coworker because Jamal and his wife, shout out to them, Jamal and Tia, because, um, because Jamal has literally been Jamal and Tia have literally been with me from the beginning of my relationship with Corey. Like I met Corey when I was around Jamal and Tia, um, and so, like, Corey and I have gone to their wedding together. Corey and I have, like, Jamal and Tia, are, they hold a special place in my heart as it pertains to my relationship with Corey. So I definitely had to tell them. Um, and, you know, I'm still kind of working through who needs to know prior to the internet. Um, if I forget you, and not forget you, but, like, if I haven't told you yet, I apologize. If you end up fi finding out from the internet and you feel like you probably should have known beforehand, I'm sorry, but perhaps it just is what it is. 
Um, there is no hard feelings. This is still, again, very overwhelming for me. Um, I am still trying to process it. So I am definitely, basically I've, I've gone through and I've, I've basically been telling people that I feel like have, anti have been anticipating this, um, that have been looking forward to this, that are genuinely happy for me that um you know that move me spiritually and in energetically in like an uplifting manner um that you know just I, that are just like my like you know i just it just it's just happening the way it's happening um i don't know when i'm gonna tell instagram i don't I, obviously i got some pictures in the tuck well, yeah, I got a couple pictures in the tuck, but I, I'm going to hold on to them until, you know, it's time. Um, I, it's just, and it's, again, it's just a personal thing where I just feel like I got to continue to keep going through the motions. I'm still, it's still like unraveling for me. Like, I'm like, I can't believe I'm about to be somebody's motherfucking mom. Like, <laughs> I'm really about to be a motherfucking parent. Like, <laughs> what? What is life? Um, but anyway, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for pulling up. Now I really feel like housekeeping is about to knock on the door. Um, happy holidays. And I will see y'all. I will talk to y'all next week. I'll holla.